Yeah, Mock the Week. He's a big, successful TV show uh, here on BBC. And, I'll, you know, some very funny people on it, but you were always one of my favourites on it. Thanks, one of which, uh, and, then, and then you walked. Was that over the flack you got over some of the jokes? Was that why you left? No, I think there was, like... They were get, definitely getting to the point where they fought to get jokes on every week and obviously had to fight to get the stuff I said on every week. And that it was getting to the stage where they were sort of... You got the feeling losing some of those arguments. And I thought, I'd rather go before I'm doing sort of twee material about... Wouldn't it be funny if you tickled a badger? So they were... <laughs> I've got a laugh, though. But so you were, they were clamping down a little bit on the, uh, on the edgy material, if we use that. Yeah, they stopped me doing the stand-up and stuff, and I thought, well, that's a good point at, to, to sort of leave it at. And then on the last episode that I was supposed to do, I thought I'd had a heart attack. <laughs> so there was, a, there was an ambulance on standby for a stunt they were doing on Blue Peter. So I got whisked off to hospital in an so ambulance. So during the show, you thought you'd had a heart attack? Just before the show started. And... Uh, they had to get the warm-up guy in to do my bit. I got taken off in an ambulance, and it turned out that I actually had what they described as a torn man boob. A torn man boob? <laughs> which, which is quite a tragic thing to hear a senior cardiologist take time out of his day to angrily tell you you have a torn man boob. <laughs> use whatever the proper scientific term is. He wanted to really humiliate you by referring to your breasts <laughs> as man boobs. <laughs> yeah. Your chest area. Yeah. Uh, what, how, do you, how do you tear a man boob? How do you do that? What were you doing that you tore your man boob? I'd been, I'd been doing push-ups uh, after, <laughs> after watching the film Bronson, which is a great film. <laughs> I decided <laughs> I would get myself into prison shape. <laughs> I'd actually and torn what you one actually of my did tits. Was you tore a man <laughs> tit and were taken <laughs> off in the Blue Peter Ambulance. Yes. <laughs> As far from being Just Bronson, a, the yeah. caged beast, as it's possible to be. It was about as humiliating as it could have possibly been, without being airlifted out on a stretcher while they played the theme tune from M.A.S.H. <laughs> and my face got dragged against the studio window. Uh, so, you walked for Mock the Week. Yeah. Are you doing uh, anything else like that? Are you going to do another panel show? Are you gonna... No, no, I'm doing a show that's uh, sort of stand-up and sketches uh, called Tramadol Nights. Uh, I don't know if you know Tramadol, it's the... It's, is it a, it's like a lithium type thing, isn't it's it? It's like a heavy morphine-based painkiller, <laughs> which my writing partner took for two weeks and lived in his house in his pants, thinking that his ex-wife still lived with him. <laughs> so we decided that would be a good sort of motto so for hold the it. show. Was this a prescribed drug, or had he found it on the street? I feel he had self-prescribed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the details, but, yeah, he, he rarely goes through the formal channels. <laughs> So, your writing partner, yep. a heavily self-medicated individual <laughs> with a series of broken relationships behind him, yep. and you have sat down to do, no doubt, a cheery family sketch show. It's pretty horrendous. Yeah, <laughs> catch it first time, cos it ain't coming back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I almost hesitate to ask, but I heard there was another title for the series at one stage. Yeah, it was originally called Deal With This Retards. <laughs> and for some reason, they just felt... I don't know. Maybe advertisers or something would get put off. <laughs> deal, deal with this. It sounds very pushy, doesn't it? Yeah, well, deal with this initially sounds like it could be like, you know, like there'd be a banker involved in Noel Edmonds. Oh, not him. <laughs> God, he horrifies me more than Lloyd Webber. His, his skin. It's like if your balls had a kneecap. <laughs> Why, it's exactly like if your balls had a kneecap. <laughs> if I... If I wanted to sit around watching people open empty boxes all day, I'd spend Christmas morning at Kerry Katona's house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Uh, now, is this true, Frankie? I've heard that you're going to give up stand-up, that you're going to give yes. up stand-up touring. Now, what? Now, this sounds ridiculous, because it's, A, your job, is what you, you do, and also, you do it well, and you have a big fan base. I would have thought that you'd, you'd want to keep doing it. It's very unusual, someone... Uh, gives up something like that. Ah, it's unusual, but I think it's also that thing of stand-up's a bit unhealthy in a way. Do you know what I mean? You're sort of looking for the love of strangers <laughs> every night. <laughs> the approval of strangers, which is very nice. I'm very glad that they come and all that stuff. But, you know, I've got friends. I've got a family. <laughs> I'd like to... You don't you know, have to. It's not, that's not them. the only reason you're going out in front of them. You're not going, love me, love me. You're going out because you can make people laugh and you have a skewed but very funny way of looking at the world. Aye, but I'd like to just do it, like, when I can concentrate on it and do it very well and, and then stop before I sort of... You know that thing when you get past 40 and you start doing routines about... I've heard your about ...your nasal it. hair or... 
I just I thought I'd, I just tried the oh well and they'd go. So you might, but you might come back then. I guess if you if you if you t you're going to take some time off, or is your intention not to return? To I don't think I would do stand up again. If the Channel Four series came back, that's got stand up in it, so I would yeah. do stand up for that. But other than that, this this tour is pretty much the end of it. You look a bit like I hope you don't mind me saying this, but you look a bit like your ears have been put on upside down because <laughs> the bit at the bottom is quite fat. And the I was, bit was yeah, I was actually born with what's called bat ears. Really? So I was born with ears that just came out like this. Oh, like the big big yeah. ears. Like prop, yeah. Well, that's that's a that's a thoughtful way of putting it. Yeah, Sorry, that's a thoughtful way of well, describing a genetic deformity. Well, you know, bat ears sounds like a, it sounds like something you would say <laughs> to someone to upset them. You got yeah, bat well, ears, that's what you bat ears. Called. But uh, basically, I got the whole sort of ear is constructed. But what? it was it was basically this surgeon did it on the sly. He literally did it in his spare so time. He was like a backstreet ear surgeon. He, well, he was a good surgeon, but like literally one of my school teachers when I was a wee boy knew him, and he was supposed to do these bits and sort of tuck them in and stuff, but he died. <laughs> <laughs> he died before he could finish the ears. So was there only just... one ear surgeon in the Gorbals? <laughs> <laughs> there was none. I had to go somewhere else. So, so you're half finished. I'm half, half, half finished ears. Well, um, <laughs> well, would you like if you don't? Oh, look, I've done a lot of work with Comic Relief. I'm sure I could get some money out of them to get them finished for you. If you want. <laughs> we can have a whip yeah. round right now have, if you want. Have Billy Connolly do an appeal for me? That would be fantastic. <laughs> get... Look at his terrible ears. <laughs> <laughs> this child was having an ear operation <laughs> and the surgeon died halfway. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> nice time, thank you. That's uh, well cut. Uh, it's really great to have you on the show finally. Uh, I think you're a, a tremendously gifted comedian. Thanks, man. Thanks yeah, for having and me. I hope you keep doing it. But if you don't, who cares really? <laughs> Let's be honest, there's plenty more out there. You know what I'm talking about. Thanks, Frank. Yeah, it's Frankie Boyle, ladies and gentlemen. Ask him by name. Thank you. Thank you.